Hello and welcome to the third and final video in our cardiac measurement series. We're going to look at assessing ventricular systolic function by calculating the ejection fraction using a measurement package on the ultrasound machine. The specific method we're going to look at uses what is known as the modified Simpsons rule or method of disks. However, there are other methods that can be used. A debate about their relative merits is outside the remit of this video. The measurements required for calculating the ejection fraction using the modified Simpsons method are made on a right parasternal long axis four chamber view and their accuracy is enormously dependent upon acquisition of good quality views optimized for the left ventricle. If you're already happy acquiring this view then please carry on but if you want some advice to, as to how to acquire them then if you fast forward to the end of this video and click the link it'll take you through to the, our basic echocardiography video series and there you'll be able to get some instruction as to how to get the four chamber view and then spend some time practicing just to make sure you can get it perfectly every time just to make sure that these measurements are as accurate as possible. So if we just have a look at this view here we've tried to make the long axis of the heart as horizontal on the screen as possible. We've also tried to ensure that we've got a continuous view of the interventricular septum from the left of the screen across to where it meets the interatrial septum and we've deliberately tried to avoid showing any of the left ventricular outflow tract in the image. We also try, try to tweak the view such that we don't have any papillary muscle visible in the image. In particular, you'll note that you tend to catch a bit of papillary muscle that creeps in on the left ventricular free wall or posterior wall towards the bottom of the image. So just make sure that you try to avoid that where at all possible. You also need to be able to see the left ventricle along its entire length, including the apex. If this means cutting off some of the left atrium off the right of the image, don't worry, that's fine. For the purposes of this view and this measurement, we're just specifically interested in the left ventricle. Once you're happy you've got the view optimised, then we'll do what we've done in previous measurements and just allow a few cardiac cycles to pass before saving a cine loop. Once you've got the cine loop saved and you're happy with it, then we'll carry on and make the measurement. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to scroll through our stored cine loop to find the first frame in which the mitral valve is closed. This approximates to the end of diastole when the left ventricle should be at its most dilated. If you're using an ECG then you can use the beginning of the QRS complex as your timestamp but in the absence of an ECG the first frame in which the mitral valve is closed is acceptable. We then need to select the appropriate measurement option from the measurements menu. Exactly how to do this will obviously vary from machine to machine and you need to just check your user manual or speak to somebody else who knows where that is if you're not sure before you start. Once we've selected the correct measurement option from the menu we're then going to follow the on-screen prompts by placing the first cursor and we're going to place it at the mitral annulus of the septal leaflet of the mitral valve so that's just here and what we're then going to do is using our trackpad or trackball follow or trace the outline of the left ventricular lumen so the endocardial surface all the way along the septal wall around the apex and then out along the left ventricular free wall until we come to the mitral annulus of the posterior leaflet of the mitral valve press set again that's the annulus just here and the machine will then draw in an, a second line that joins the septal leaflet annulus and the posterior leaflet annulus uh, sort of a cross between the two and also a third line which extends from the midpoint of that second line along the longest part of the long axis of the left ventricle. So we end up with three lines, one that traces the outline of the ventricle, one that goes between the two mitral annually, and one that goes along the long axis, uh, the longest part of the long axis of the left ventricle. When we press set again, we then notice that these parallel vertical lines appear across the length of the left ventricle. And what the machine then does is to imagine that the left ventricle is cylindrical along its long axis so it has a line of rotational symmetry along its long axis so that those di those lines those parallel lines effectively represent discs and it uses that assumption to then calculate the volume of the left ventricle in this instance we're talking about end diastolic volume the next step is then to repeat the exact same process but this time for end systole i.e. when the left ventricle is at its lowest volume so we're going to just scroll forward until we find the last frame in which the mitral valve leaflets are closed so if we were to skip forward one more frame we would find that they, those leaflets would just start to open 
and then we're going to just trace the outline of that left ventricular lumen in exactly the same way that we did before. Again we get our same lines across between the two points of the mitral annulus and the same last line, that third line along the length of the ventricle. And then we have the same calculation for left ventricular volume created by the machine or calculated by the machine for the left ventricular volume at end systole. So what we now have is two values, one is left ventricular volume at end diastole, one is left ventricular volume at end systole. And if you're to take the volume of the left ventricle at the end of systole away from the left ventricular volume at the end of diastole, you are then left with a volume of blood that has been ejected from that ventricle during systole. If that's then calculated as a percentage of the original, i.e. the diastolic volume of the left ventricle, then that gives us ejection fraction as a percentage. And that's what we have there in the top of the screen, that LVEF is left ventricular ejection fraction. The mod LAX just means for modified Simpsons long axis view. The number above it is at the area length method. I meant I sort of touched at the beginning of this video upon the fact that there are different ways of calculating the ejection fraction, different methods aside from modified Simpsons. So we're just concentrating on that mod figure for now. And then there's some other information that's contained in that measurement menu as well. But for the purposes of this video, we're interested in just looking at that ejection fraction figure. As with all of the other measurements that we've performed, please just remember that it's always sensible to repeat your measurements generally three to five times is advisable and make sure that you're getting repeatable sensible results each time. So that's it that concludes this video and therefore the video series. We hope you found them useful please feel free to get in touch if you have any comments or go and visit our website our Facebook page and our Twitter account for more excellent teaching resources. Happy scanning!